Throughout the study of trigonometry, it is likely that you have encountered compound angles, which means an algebraic sum of two or more angles. For example, cos pi over 2 minus x contains the pi over 2 minus x, which is the compound angle. Another example might be sine pi minus x or cos pi plus x. And notice that identities such as the cofunction identity, so cos pi over 2 minus x equals the sine of x, could be proved by building a right angle triangle and observing the trig ratio of the relevant angles. So here I'm going to label that angle x, the other angle pi over 2 minus x, and the sides a, b, and hypotenuse 1. And we clearly see that cos pi over 2 minus x is a, which is also the sine of x, so they are equal. However, what you see in this diagram is that it is only true for acute angles x. And if we want to extend x to all angles, we will have to do a bit more casework. So is there a way to prove this more analytically? Well, yes. We will be deriving an identity that will help with that today, namely the cosine addition identity. So let's start by constructing a unit circle. And let's try to visualize what a plus b really is. I will do that by constructing a line with angle b. And from that line, another line with angle a. Now, because we want cos a plus b in terms of something simpler, we can label the point at a plus b, q, uh, p1, and at angle b, q1. We can find their coordinates by taking the cosine and sine of the respective angles. So p1 will be cos a plus b comma sine a plus b, and q1 will be cos b comma sine b. Okay. So for now, we don't really see any relations, but notice that we have cos b and cos a plus b. So having cos a may also be useful. And we can have cos a by constructing another line with angle negative a, and we can call that point q0. q0 will be cos of negative a comma sine of negative a, and using the even and odd identities, we can simplify it to cos a comma negative sine of a. Finally, we can note a final point called p0 at the um, 1 comma 0 point, and we can label the center of the circle O for reference later on. And notice here that if we construct the lines uh, p1, p0, and q1, q0, they seem to be equal to each other. This is true because the orange lines have an length of 1, d2 being the radius of the unit circle. And the angles which the orange line makes in p1, o, p0, and q1, o, q0 are both equal, having an angle of a plus b. By observing such relations, we see that the two triangles P1, O, P0 and Q1, O, Q0 are congruent. What this means is that P1, P0 is equal to Q1, Q0. Alternatively, you can use the cosine law to verify that the lengths are equal due to equal sides length and equal angle opposite of the desired side. And at this point, I recommend you to pause the video and try to derive the identity yourself, as most of the work has already been done. Well, if you have done that, we can continue. And what I can do here is that we can say that P1, P0 is the square root of the difference in x squared and difference in y squared coming from the distance formula. And we can do the same thing for q1, q0 to be the square root of the difference in x squared plus the difference in y squared. We will now square both sides to get rid of the square roots. And we will expand the brackets and further simplify it using the Pythagorean identity on the highlighted terms. 
So the cos squared a plus b and sine squared a plus b, cos squared b plus sine squared b and cos squared a plus sine squared a, which is just 1. So simplifying that will give that it is equal to, so cos a plus b is equal to cos a cos b minus sine a sine b. So that is quite cool, a new identity we derived there. And I also want to show you an animation I made. So here it is. So the orange line could be thought as Q1, Q0, and the white line is P1, P0. And what you see here is that the lines have equal length. So the identity will be true for all angles. It's just a visual way to show it. So yeah, let's continue. Another thing I want to do in this video is that because we started with the co-function identity, I want to end with it, but to prove it using the tools we have acquired. That is, we can uh, say that cos pi over 2 minus x is equal to cos pi over 2 plus negative x to put it in the form of cos a plus b. And by the way, differences in angles like pi over 2 minus x also have related identities, which we will discuss in my next video. And we can simplify this using the identity we just proved. And finally, it gives sine of x the desired result. Actually, one more thing before I end today's video, and it is that I will be proving the sine addition identity just because we just proved the co-function identity. So I thought it would be quite cool to do that now. So we can rewrite it in terms of cos using the co-function identity. Grouping pi over 2 minus a together as one angle and negative b as the other angle. Then simplifying it with that identity, we have that sine a plus b is equal to sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. So that is it for today's video. In the next video, I'll be discussing the result of these identities which we proved. That is, we'll be applying it to uh, tan a plus b, and we will be considering what cos a minus b is in a more formal way. That is, we will be deriving identities for those as well. Well, for now, good night.